Hi guys, this is William here, the BD manager of Flowfly Tech. How are you doing today? It's been almost a year since we launched our first gen solar asset tracker. We've received many excellent feedback about it. To serve the needs of monitoring, temperature, humidity and flow status, we've developed this product. Today I'm going to share with you our newly released product, the second gen solar tracker TLP2 SFB. It's not only has a bigger battery capacity and solar panel, it also has BLE 5.0 connectivity, which enables more possibilities. But if you don't have the need for BLE sensors and frequent reporting intervals, our first gen still will be the best choice for you. I'll introduce its features, where it can be used and how to set it up in the coming session. It's a battery power asset tracker, providing no wire installation. The first important feature is the real-time tracking and buffer location reporting. When the device cannot reach the server, for example when the network is down, it will save the location points in its memory and then it will report all the buffer messages when the network recovers. With the built-in 3-axis accelerometer, it will also report the asset movements, start and stop keep you informed. Secondly, it has a big internal battery and solar panel. Battery capacity is double compared to the first gen. A fully recharged battery can keep it running for up to 320 days without solar charging. Its high-grade solar panel extends the battery life a lot, and it keeps the tracker on always powered during the day. When the appropriate uh, recording intervals is set based on your local climate, your sun level, and how many hours it moves a day. The battery will never go flat. Here's another important feature, BLE 5.0. Nowadays, many things go wireless. The wireless sensors provide more flexible but easier way to collect uh, more information from the environment. We have developed a very useful wireless sensor by using BLE 5.0. Now we have three sensors. The first one is temperature and humidity uh, sensor. The second one is store and temperature sensor. The third one is wireless relay to, to be used to uh, cut off fuel or starter. And uh, you can use it to turn on the air conditioning in the reefer in this case. These two battery power sensors uh, have battery lives up to six years and it's a replaceable battery. This device could work perfectly with all these sensors and then bring a unique solution for asset monitoring. It could also work with other third-party BRE sensors based on the customer requirements. The next useful function is the removal alert. It has a light sensor at the back here. So when it's pulled off from the asset, it detects light and sends an alert to notify the user that's been removed. However, if you are using our magnet for mounting, this feature won't work because there's already lights at the red panel when you are using the magnets. Also, last but not least, it has IP67 completely waterproof and it has such a rugged construction for outdoor uses. How do we install it on the asset? It can be mounted with the screws that come with it. Make sure you drill four holes first on the asset. If you don't wish to put holes on the asset or damage the asset, you can use this magnet that I just mentioned, which could be purchased from us additionally. It requires no installation, you can simply attach it on the asset. Obviously, there's already light at the back, detected by the light sensor, so the removal alert won't be available. The third way is using a silicon glue. You can put the glue around the device on the asset without the magnet. So uh, the glue won't damage the asset and it won't have any screws. Just make sure you leave it dry for a couple hours. When you need to take the device off, you can simply slide the glue with a knife. This device is designed to be used on assets with no power source, such as trailers, dry vans, containers, caravans. You can mount it on top of the assets for better sun level. Make sure the device is installed on a flat surface because in some surface the device will be soaked in water when raining. 
Alternatively, you can install it on the side of the asset. If your assets are parked at a certain bay facing the same direction every day, the device will be able to face the sunlight directly. Make sure it has the most ideal sun level during the day. In general, solar-powered asset tracker with BLE is rare in the market, especially in this price range, which has a much more reasonable price comparatively. It requires no installation. You can leave it on your assets outdoor. You won't need any maintenance. You can pretty much track anything with it. Let's take a closer look at the device. At the back of the device, you can see a light sensor here, GMSS indicator, network indicator, and battery level indicator. Flashing means it's searching for signal. When it's slowly on, it means it already gained the signal. These indicators will go out 70 seconds after it's turned on without connecting to USB. There's a QR code here. Sticker here shows the device time here. It's the charging USB cable that comes with it. Spine magnets. You can use it for charging or configuration. The first thing you need to do is to take out the lid on the SIM card slot and then turn the power switch to on status. Then you can connect the tracker to the USB cable and configure it by using the config program. You can use only the USB cable that comes with it for configuration and charging. The magnets are weak because the case is thick and solid for outdoor use. It's better to put it upside down so you can see the indicators. Or you can use our base for better charging and configuration. It's also available for purchase addition. In the config program, you need to set the API and IP port to make sure your device comes online on the platform. You can also change the reporting intervals under the timer column. The values can be set at your preferred interval for a start, then test whether the sun can always keep the device at a high battery level. If not, you can try a lower frequency. A lower reporting frequency can maintain the balance between uh, power consumption and the power gaining from the solar. But with this battery size and the solar panel, we don't need to worry too much about the battery going flat. After the configuration, now please disconnect the device and power off first. When the device is powered off, please insert a SIM card, give it a little push, and then switch the device on. The device doesn't support SIM hot swap, so please make sure of giving the device a new power cycle after the SIM is inserted. Once all are done, Put the rubber ring and the SIM lid back. Tighten the screws properly to prevent water leaking. Before you deploy it, you need to give it a full charge because the battery are not 100% full when they are stored. Thanks for watching this video. If you like our video, please subscribe us and follow us on LinkedIn. We have a lot more to offer. Thank you.